Hi. Welcome to our special presentation about Lyme disease. I'm Emilio Delgado, and I play Luis on Sesame Street. I'm pleased to bring this program to you from the good people of the Lyme Foundation. They are devoted to the prevention of Lyme disease through education. For you adults, please feel free to tape this and pass it on to teachers, parents, or anyone you can think of who can help spread the word about Lyme disease. The news team from WTIK has put together a special series to help us do just that. Good evening and welcome to WTIK News. I'm Chelsea Checkwell. And I'm Don Woods. Tonight, a special series of reports on Lyme disease and those tiny troublemakers that spread it. Ticks. Lyme disease is making headlines like never before as the infection continues to spread across the United States and around the globe. Scientists are still studying this mysterious illness, but experts believe tick control and personal protection are the keys to getting a handle on this disease. Chelsea, tell us more about those bothersome bugs. Thanks, Don. The tiny tick is definitely the villain in this Lyme disease story. It's as small as the point of a pencil. It can get as large as a raisin, and it certainly can cause some big problems. These pesky pests hitch a ride on people or animals, and if they stay there long enough, they can pass on a bacteria or a germ that makes you sick with the disease we call Lyme disease. Don? Chelsea, just one question. Can all ticks give you Lyme disease? Good question, Don. The truth is only certain types of ticks carry the Lyme disease bacteria, and even then, not every one of these ticks has it. But you can't tell by looking whether the tick is infected. So it's best to treat every tick as if it could be a problem. Thanks, Chelsea. You might be wondering where these ticks live. Well, in a few words, ticks are mostly hicks. <laughs> they spend their time in woods or in high grass and along the roadside. While they're most active during warm weather, ticks may be out year-round, so it's best to follow the personal protection tips we are about to give you. First, if you're playing outside, especially if you are near the woods, Try to wear white or light-colored clothing. The ticks will show up better than it will on dark clothing. Next, tuck your pants into your socks. You might not make the cover of Rolling Stone looking like this, but it is a lot better than getting sick from a tick bite. Remember, ticks don't jump onto your body. They crawl up it. So, keeping your legs covered will help you protect yourself. If you're wearing shorts and a t-shirt, it's best to use a spray called a repellent to keep the ticks away. Ask your parents for help putting the spray on, but wash it off when you go back indoors. These sprays are powerful, so be careful with them. The experts say even if you follow all these rules, a persistent tick may still latch on. That's why a tick check is the most important thing you can do to protect yourself. Let's go live to our resident expert on Lyme disease, Dr. Tick Doff. Hi, Don. Doctor, what exactly is a tick check? Well, um, a tick check is exactly what it sounds like. It's a check for ticks. And there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Oh, tell us about that. Well, um, these miniature menaces are so hard to see, you should not only look for them, you should feel for them. Run your hands over your arms and your legs and uh, check for bumps. If you have dark skin or freckles, this is even more important. Don't stop with the arms and legs. Ticks like warm, dark places to rest. So check your armpits and uh, the edges around your hair and your private parts. Have your parents check spots you can't see. Doctor, how often should you do a tick check? Well, Don, that depends on where you are. If you're near the 
hot spot. <laughs> That's the uh, the woods, the tall grass near the beach, or uh, even along the roadside. You should do a tick check several times a day, if not um, at least once a day. What do you do if you find a tick? Do you have to see a doctor, doctor? No, that's not necessary, Don Don. Any adult can remove a tick with the right tools. All they need is a pair of fine point tweezers like these right here, placed at the skin surface. Once they've grabbed hold of the tick, they pull out with one smooth move and out they come. The bite should be cleaned and the tick should be saved for a Lyme disease test. The tick can be kept alive by placing it in a small container with a few blades of grass. If you're at school and you find a tick on yourself, go directly to the school nurse or to any teacher. Don't try to take it off yourself. You can do more harm than good if you take it off the wrong way. Whoop! Whoop! Oh, oh, hello. Hello, Rover. How are you? Down, boy. Sit. Oh. Good. You know, it's a good idea to check your pets. Oh. Ticks attach themselves to animals, and they can get Lyme disease, too. Not just people. Oh. Ask mo oh, good dog. Good oh. dog. Oh, yes. Ask mom or dad about tick collars and tick sprays they can use on the family pets like I do on Rover. I love you, Rover. Thanks, Dr. Ticktop, for that good advice. By now, some of you might be wondering just how the tick can give you Lyme disease. Chelsea, tell us more. Thanks, Don. The bad news is this. The tick can bite you and you may not even know it. The good news is it takes a while for the tick to actually infect you with the disease. So a good tick check is the key. Experts believe once a tick attaches itself to your body, it takes time for it to pass on Lyme disease. The tick will sink its mouth into your skin. Interestingly, the tick has its own way of numbing the area it's about to bite, so the victim may not even feel it. Once the tick is attached, it begins sucking the blood and eventually swells up. It's easier to see at this point, since it may become nearly the size of a raisin. This is when the tick may actually pass on Lyme disease. After it's finished feeding, the tick will drop off. Again, all this can happen, and you may not even know it. Chelsea, you say it takes a while for the tick to transmit the disease. So, which is more important, getting the tick off your body quickly or getting it off properly? Don, removing the tick properly is more important. Hmm. If you remove the tick the wrong way, you may get Lyme disease anyway. The key is not to panic. If you spot a tick, you should go to an adult right away and have it removed. How does the tick compare to other bugs that bite? I know mosquitoes can go from one person to another within minutes. How about the tick? Don, the tick doesn't make its rounds like a mosquito. It only needs to feed once in each stage of its life. So, after the tick has its meal and falls off, it won't bother anyone else for quite a while. Okay. Thanks, Chelsea. Tonight, a survey of our viewers shows that most of you think that Lyme disease can only be spread during certain times of the year, usually the summer. Well, tonight, Wally the weatherman the, is here to set the record straight on that. Wally? Well, as we said earlier, Lyme disease has been reported across the United States. And that means that different ticks that carry Lyme are across the country, too. If we take a look at our map, we can see that patients with Lyme disease live in every state. Ticks are active all year round. That covers spring, summer, fall, and winter, too. There is no season that is completely tick-free. Don? Thanks, Wally, for that update. Next, we interview a Lyme patient who's had a pretty rough time of it, Tony Tough Guy. Tony, how did you get Lyme disease? Whoa, dude, totally radical, man. TV in my own room with my poosters. I can't believe it. Whoa. Whoa, 
Oh, well, well, Don, I never thought a little chick could hurt a tough guy like me. Well, I used to walk around in the woods, you know, and near the beach in my shorts and tank top, my muscles were bulging. <laughs> my friends would use repellent sprays, but I'd just laugh. Ha, ha, ha! But uh, I thought they were wimps. But uh, one day, one of those stupid little bugs must have gotten me, and I never even knew it. When did you know something was wrong? Well, I woke up one morning and I felt lousy. I thought I had the flu, you know. Sick to my stomach, achy all over. Then I noticed this bogus rash on my leg. You know, kind of a round red circle. I had this wicked pain in my knee, too. I thought it was from playing football or something. But my mom dragged me to the doctor anyway. <laughs> I couldn't feel anything on one side of my face, either. And that really scared her. It took the doctor a while to figure out what was wrong. Once he did, he started me on antibiotics. That's medicine that helps you get better. And I'm feeling excellent. Tony, do you have any advice for the youngsters watching? Yeah, you're not a wimp if you dress right and use tick sprays. I thought I was wicked tough, but I found out I wasn't after I got really sick. If you're smart, you'll protect yourself from those ticks. Party on, dudes! Thanks, Tony. We're glad you're feeling better. Now, some of you kids have written in with questions about Lyme disease. In the studio, we have a very special guest. Straight from Sesame Street, Emilio Delgato. Hi, Emilio. Hi, Don. Hi, Chelsea. We thought you could help us read some of our mail. Oh, sure. I'd love to. Uh, here's a letter from someone who wants to know. Can I catch Lyme disease from my friends or my dog? No. You cannot get Lyme disease from another person, from your pet. You cannot pick up the germ from a drinking fountain, a toilet seat, or anywhere else. The only way to get Lyme disease is to be bitten by an infected tick. Ah, okay. Uh, question number two. If you find a tick, should you kill it? First of all, Emilio, ticks are very hard to kill. They're flat with a hard body, so it's tough to squish them. If you find one somewhere other than your body, wrap it up tightly in toilet paper and flush it. If it's on your body, your mother or father should take it off and save it in a small container with a few blades of grass to keep it alive. The tick should be sent to a lab for a Lyme disease test. Your doctor can help you with this. Wow, okay. Um, now, this viewer wants to know, if you don't have tweezers, is there another way to remove a tick? No. The best way to remove a tick is with tweezers. You may have heard stories about ticks being burned off the skin or covered with petroleum jelly. These things don't work. If you find a tick and you don't have the right tools to get it out, it's best to wait until your parents can remove it the right way. Waiting a few minutes is better than doing it incorrectly. Uh huh. Okay. Well, um, here's a good question. If I'm not in the woods, does that mean I don't have to worry about ticks? No, it doesn't. The area right around your house, as well as parks and beaches, may have ticks. Remember, they live in high grass and bushes, too. In fact, that area might even be more dangerous because you probably spend more time there, and you may not be thinking about ticks. The best rule is to dress right, use the sprays we talked about, and do a daily tick check. This is a big question. Is there a cure for Lyme disease? Well, that's a tough one. Doctors can give you medicine that works if they can catch it early, but no one can say right now if you can be cured of Lyme. Most people do get better. So I guess it's best to be careful. You bet. Thank you, Emilio. <clears throat> and finally tonight, we leave you on a musical note 
which we hope is on key. We've told you a lot about Lyme disease and ticks. Now here's Dr. Ticked Off with a person who helps kids everywhere remember about Tick Patrol. Major Tick Check. Here's a little song they hope will tune you into our safety message. Take it away, fellas. If you're near the woods and you're around the trees, you might forget about Lyme disease. That tick might get you and it's hard to fight. So protect yourself and keep this in mind. Do a tick check. What'd you say? Do a tick check. Oh, ha! <laughs> Cover yourself from head to toe. You stop that tick, you got nowhere to go. If you spray yourself, that's your best bet. When you go inside, just don't forget. Do a tick check. What? Do a tick check. Do a ticky 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 tick 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 check. Now that's fun. If it bites you, man, you might get sick. So one good check should do the trick. It might be cute and it might be small, but that tick can't hurt you. So I'm telling you all. Do a tick check. Do a tick check. Do a ticky 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 tick 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 check tick check. Whoa. Word to your father. And your father. Word. Always good advice. Speaking of checks, we've got to check out of here. Night, Chelsea. Good night, Emilio. Good night, Don. Yeah, good night, and thank you. And we hope that you've enjoyed this. We would like to thank the Centers for Disease Control for funding this project so that we can help you and your family stay healthy. Good night. <laughs>